So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 23rd of July, um, 2013. And um, this is uh, one of the questions that comes up this time of year. We do lots of fun, exciting things during the year and challenging things during the summer. Um, and then um, we go back to, uh, to school. And so the question is, how can we make the, the magic of summer move into the fall? That's one way to ask it. I'm sure that we can reframe that. But um, Karen Fastenpower graciously said that she'll come talk to us about that. Grace Raphael is with us. Grace is um, somebody who did the Youth Voices Summer Program with me last year. Um, Karen was say there too. But both Karen and Grace are CO Mookers this year. Um, and, and Marcus is with us. Uh, Marcus is a student who's in the Youth Voices Summer Program. So we're going to quickly, and Marcus' camera doesn't work, but that's okay. Marcus, introduce yourself, if you would. So um, my name is Marcus. Um, I am an attendant at the Youth Voices Summer 14 program at Lehman College, and I love to write. Where do you go to school? What, what grade are you in? Um, I'm 10th grader going into my junior year at high school, and I go to school in Queens at uh, Bayside High. Right. But you live in the Bronx. Yes, I do. And I hear you're, um, you've are you been working with BronxNet quite a bit this year. Yes, I actually picked up an internship with them um, when I came to the Youth Voices program. Justin, the cameraman, actually offered me an internship there, which I jumped on the opportunity. Right. And I can hear your yes. broadcast voice already, so it's great to have you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very cool. Um, all right, so tomorrow's our last day, Marcus. We're going to... Um, we're, so we're going to talk a little bit about what your experiences were like, um, and uh, we'll see how this goes. So tell us about the Youth Voices Summer Program, Marcus. Let's start there. Well, initially... What were your expectations, and, and how's, how's it turned out for you? Okay, so I'll, I'll start at the beginning. So um, I actually came about the program from my English teacher, Ms. Romero. She is an English teacher at Bayside High School. Um, she said to me, she came to me one day and she said, you know, you have a really great talent for writing and you should definitely check out this program if you're interested. And I was, so she gave me the website. I, uh, I submitted an application. It was actually the last day for applications. And um, then I received an email from, uh, I forgot who it was. It was either you or Christy. Me or Christy, yeah. Yeah, and saying that I was accepted. It's Christy King. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, it said that I was accepted and then I emailed her back and told her I was in. And um, when I came, I, what I was really expecting was, um, well, what was I really expecting? I don't really know. I mean, writing, definitely, which was something we really focused on. I liked how we had, um, in terms of writing, we didn't only focus on, you know, a journal. We also had sort of like an online community. We had, you know, Google Hangout, which is this here. We had other things that, you know, just linked us together in really interesting ways, like the badges. That helps us grow as a community because it, it allows us to, um, we could award these things to each other and build upon our strengths. Um, I, I just, I really liked all the things that we were working on. It, it was unexpected to be working with those kind of things, which was really cool. So I liked it. So tell us more about badges. I was going to ask you about that, so I'm glad you brought it up. What, what did you... What kind of badges did you make, and did you like them, or did, were there um, things yeah, you didn't I like? The, I thought the um, the badge program was really cool. It's on, I think it's PT, P2PU.org. Mm -hmm. um, the way it works is... I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I do some work for this. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I like it. Um, you start off with a, a template. You can either create it from a website called openbadges.me, but I prefer to create mine through um, Google Draw. And once there, you know, you upload the image, and then you can um, you put the criteria and the description, and you can distribute it to on the on the website. So, what when uh, Vanessa Generelli was with us, uh, she asked you to come up with a badge for something that you're passionate about, something you're interested in. What was your first one you made? Um, well, my first badge was kind of like. A test. It was called the Social Connectivity Badge, which was awarded for people that had Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, and uh, I forgot the other one, Instagram. 
So basically the criteria was to have those three accounts and be active on them and you'd be awarded that the social connectivity badge. Um, my second badge was the creative achievement badge, which is one that I was really serious about. And that is because I, I absolutely love creativity. I think that a lot of people overlook it and it's something that, you know, I think Grace would agree with me too. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> I think it's just, I don't really know how to explain it. It's just, it's such a cool thing to, to be creative and just have your own view on things and to put your own spin on things and just to just be creative, be yourself. I like that. So that badge, um, the criteria was to demonstrate your creative achievement through a work of literature. So you can submit like something you've written or something that you've worked on and then I'd go through the process of uh, distributing the badge to your account or however it works. Mm-hmm. And you chose you chose that because I love I just love and I love awarding creative people I love creativity in general and right. I think so it's you something also, you you, are, you actually wrote a piece of literature that was a creative exploration mm-hmm. of historical topic yes 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 it, I, I did so it's so the badge fits what you did yeah. By the way, anybody who wants to check out, um, so far, all of our badges from this year, um, it's, they're at voices.net slash badges summer 2014. Um, and you can kind of see them there. We, we have been tagging them YV summer as well on P2PU badges, badges about P2PU. But anyway, so... Um, so, yeah, Marcus, but you haven't, you haven't actually issued it to anybody yet, have you? Um... Not right now, no. Yeah. But you, I don't think anybody to submit anything. Yeah, tomorrow. I think we're, we, you said we're going to be uh, focusing on that tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Karen, did you have further thoughts you wanted to ask about the badges? <laughs> no, Karen, that was you yeah. I was muted. Sorry. Um, no, that was what I wanted to know. Well, so can can I? I mean. I, yeah, I, of course I can, but um, I'm going to – when I was thinking about, okay, if somebody asked me tonight, uh, what what from the summer do you wish you could bring into your school? Mm-hmm. Um, badging is one of the things that uh, – and the way we do it is one of the things that I've always been curious about how it changes between the summer and the school. So, right? so we, we – at, at school, the badges are very um, – Standards oriented. They're very kind of like teachers give to students when students, you know, finish uh, work um, and show certain competencies. And you know, there's there's a lot of positive things about all of that. Um, but watching these, ch- I, I t- tweeted out uh, earlier this evening that. Um, the badges that these young people and the teachers in the program are creating are truly peer-to-peer. I mean, they really are about what they value and what's important to them. But what they value and what's important to them within the context of, of this program. So they have to think about a badge that somebody could use work from the last three weeks to apply for. Right? Mm-hmm. So in that way, it kind of establishes some sort of parameters. But so I, I think there's room for both. But that's that's still and I think it's an ongoing issue. Like how do you I, I want to call these democratic badges. How do you how do you do these democratic badges yet have them be uh, kind of meaningful in some way? But so the badge that Marcus described would mm-hmm. fit into standards and it would fit into you know school stuff. And it seems like what we saw last summer is that sometimes students are harder on each other in assessing things than teachers are. So what's the barrier to taking this model into school? Or what are the, you know, what are the challenges? I'm, I'm a bit worried that one of the challenges is that we're measuring and what, what school systems consider measuring of creativity, let's say, for instance, which is something I think we all would not deny we love, um, might be very different than what we might decide is the merit of a badge of creativity. So I'm, I'm curious how we might transfer a badge of 
you know, in creativity to the school context and get others to, to actually see the value of it. How do we translate it into the language of school is, I guess, my question. Mm -hmm. Which maybe can't be answered right now, but I think it's a concern that con that so, worries me. Yeah, let's hear Marcus on this. Do you think do you think we could a, a class in school and it could go bigger than that? Maybe at your school could do badges the way we did it this summer. Um, what would happen? Badges is is a real interesting thing in my opinion. Um, it really, in my opinion, I think it really depends on the on the group in general. So let's say you see the group here at Youth Voices, we're more grounded as writers. So you know we 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 kind of uh, how do I I don't really know how to put it. It it's more like I think it's the person who creates the badge. They might have the wrong idea or they might be judging someone on I, I don't really know how to how to put it in words, but you can kind of get what I'm what I'm getting at. But that's a real world skill, right? To know how to set, you know, whether it's a badge or something else, to be able to say, this is an important skill, this is how, this is what might be evidence of that skill, and this is how we measure it. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a real school skill, yeah? Yeah, but, yeah. Oops, Marcus, you're muted. I don't know if... Oh, let's see if she's Am I, did I mute myself? Oh, oh, you did, but go ahead. We I missed you for a second. What was that? One sec. You're good. Yeah, I'm, I'm babysitting too. Just give me one second. That's okay. Good. Oh, that's all Alex. Right. Alex. We love to have babies on the show. Oh, my goodness. Do what you need to do. <laughs> Alex, can you hear us? Yeah. Hi, Alex. Alexandra, we Hello. see your icon, not you yet. So that's part of what tonight's show is. It's about uh, getting some of the students um, learning how to use their computers at home on, um, on the Hangout, which is cool. Alex, did, do you hear us? Yeah. Oh. We can, we can hear you. Good, yeah. Is that Karen? That's Karen, yep. Hi, yeah. it's me. Alex, um, can, can, does your camera work or no? Uh, not really right now. Okay. That's, okay, that's cool. That's cool. We have you like this. Introduce yourself if you don't mind. Um, I'm Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I... What school do you go to? Wait, is this going to be on YouTube? I... Yeah. <laughs> um. It's okay, Alex. Welcome. Hey. Uh, nice. nice to meet you, Alex. I didn't meet you the other day, but I'm meeting you now. It's, this okay. is Grace. Are you in the Youth Voices Summer Program, and can you tell us, if so, how it is or what you've liked? Uh, yeah, I'm in it. Um, I liked, I like some of the games they played. The rock, paper, scissors. The, we had to create our own rock, paper, scissors. And the one where we had the three-person conversation, because you get to know people better. So and tell us what that looked like, because I don't know that one. The three-person conversation thing? Yeah. Oh, there's one person, there's an interviewer, someone being interviewed, and the person who's writing down the notes. So, you know, everyone has their own task. Cool. And you were interviewed by a teacher, right? Yeah. Two and well, yeah, teacher. And what did you say about what you would like to tell somebody about you as a learner? Uh, I would like to tell them that their energy is very important because I could feel it in the room. It might sound creepy, but you know, when they come in angry, I could feel their anger. That's cool. That is very cool. <laughs> so Alex, tell us a little bit about the writing you've been doing this summer. I've been doing all types of writing. The journaling, I wrote one poem. I did a few articles and annotating and well yeah, just that stuff. What's your research inquiry? What are you looking into more deeply? Uh, more deeply I was looking into perfection. Does are people perfect? You know. <laughs> 
are confusing questions because some people say no, some people say you're perfect just the way you are, so it's, it gets me confused. Ooh. It's a big issue in psychology, like people who you know, look at perfection. So oh, yes, I, did, I, did tell the, wait, sorry, I did tell the teacher that I wanted to study psychology. Mm -hmm. he, he's very supportive, too. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm back. That's cool. Whoa. Alex is with us now, too, Mark. Yeah, I heard her. Hi, Alex. Oh, good. Hey, Marcus. <laughs> Alex, you also um, wrote something in your journal and then did some revision. Do you want to talk about that piece? Uh, yeah, I thought that piece was very important. So I felt like, although I didn't want to publish it because I'm not so big with the media, I decided that I have to get it out there because it's hitting an issue that most people would argue about. Which is? What's the issue? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, it's, it's about um, people um, talking about how Christians hate gays and stuff. And how it is true for some people, it's it's not a universal thing. Not all Christians hate gays, and we shouldn't be discriminated for that and stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated position you take in, in that yeah. in that piece. I have my own beliefs too, but I don't hate gay people. Mm -hmm. Has has that received any response yet? Say again. So we it's were talking recent. about. I think. It was... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alex. No, I'm done. Okay. So one of the badges. Did you go ahead with doing a revision badge, or what? If what kind of we were talking about badging just uh, as we came on. What kind of badge did you make? I made the revision badge. Okay. I did have a badge at the beginning, but you kept on changing my. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though, because the revi revision badge, I kind of like it now. I didn't apply for it though. I applied for the um, what is it called? The annotating badge. Okay. And I applied for it because I hate annotating, and I thought maybe getting a badge in it, since I did it, would encourage me a little bit. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? Why, wh how would that work for you? Um, I don't know. Just feeling accomplished. Getting a badge for something you don't like. You're like, hey, maybe I should try it out a little more. So. And you did your annotating in now comment. Is that right? Yeah, and then I put it on youth voices. Okay. Yeah. And, you, and you wrote a response too to the article. Thank yeah. you. Did. No, I didn't. Uh, I wrote about the article, a summary about it, but not a comment to it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I, I want to jump pretty fast if you, if Marcus uh, can join us too. Um, how, how does your work in this summer um, compare to the kind of reading, writing, annotating, working with media, you know, working in community and all that, and that you do in school? And then, you know, how do you think it makes you think about your work in school? Because that's one of the themes that we we're going to talk about here tonight. Is like, how do we take some of our school, our, our summer experience into school? Uh, so, Mark, Marcus, you should answer first. He's not here. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think it just made me a little bit more brave to say what I have to say. Because, honestly, I think the media could be the scariest place ever. People are so aggressive and mean and discriminatory and stuff. But if I'm able to actually get my word out on the media, maybe in class, I'll be a little bit more brave to share my writing and opinions. All right, sorry about that. The baby was crying again. Um, what was the question? I'm sorry. Just, would, uh, go ahead. How would... Um, how does our youth voices writing benefit our school and stuff like that? Um, well, I, I'm definitely going back to school with a uh, writing better because I, I did realize that my writing um, definitely bettered while I was here. 
I think the um, being around other writers and just being evaluated by them and getting feedback from the type of people that are writing just like me, it really helps you with, um, with improving your writing in general. So I, I do think I'm going to take a lot of that back with me when I go back to school. <laughs> That's nice. It's interesting to me that you said that you came into the program already loving writing and thinking of yourself as a writer. Mm -hmm. What did you hone or what did you craft or what do you feel got better about your craft as a writer? Um, I think uh, my stamina definitely increased for writing because usually I would write for like maybe 10 minutes a day. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I used to write, it's not a lot. I'm sorry, hold on one second again. That's cool. Okay. Cool. I used to write a lot too, but then I stopped doing it for a while. Since the end of the school year, because it got tiring. I, you know, I, kids said this last year too, and I don't totally understand it. Um, I mean, I do a little bit, but not, not the way I think you're saying it. The, so, how important, it sounds like the peers are really important, the kids you're with. But you have, you know, you're with kids in school too, and I don't, you know, I don't think that kids in the Youth Voice of Summer program. I mean, you're all very special, but I, I think you're young people, just like lots of young people. So what makes it, what makes it possible for the peers to influence, you know, like the people around you, to influence you so much in the summertime? Mm, that's a tricky question. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, okay, I'm back. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, it was not a very well-worded question, but I, um, you mentioned how important it was to have other writers around you. Yes. Right? So I'm wondering, I'm wondering why that was, th why that's different in the summertime than it is in school. Um, well, I think the fact that people were willing to gather out here in the first place during their summer means that they at least have some level of dedication to writing to even do that in the first place because I don't think somebody who oh, is not serious about writing is going to say, oh, three weeks? Ah, I'm not doing that. Um, so it, it, it just oh, creates uh, the, it's, it's like, a, um, how do I say this? Everybody that's there basically knows what they're doing for the most part or, you know, they're, they're trying to better themselves in terms of writing but some are already there already, and I think it's good to be in an environment with people like that because they, they will be giving you pointers and tips. Maybe they'll give you some, they'll, they'll, um, they'll give you tips on how they write and it can improve you. And like I said, evaluation is also a good thing too. People could read and maybe they can tell you, oh, maybe you can, um, you can fix this or you can add more detail to this or imagery or things like that. I think as a... As a writer to a writer, it would be something that they can each understand. That was deep. I was just going to say because we have so much assignments in school that you get tired of writing. Mm. <laughs> What's that? Well, that's worth thinking what? about. Yeah, it is. What do you mean by assignments? It's kind of your your program is more like, hey, write something on the computer and just get it done by whenever. But still, so, you're doing a lot of work. Yeah. But maybe it's that it's your choice of what you're doing. But um, in school, it's more like you have to get it done now, 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 and it gets really tiring. But then I get, but then again, it's because most people can really do their work. But I'm one who does my work, and if they gave me a strict schedule on when to do it, it makes me get sick of it. So my question is, what's the it? Is the it something different in the that in the Youth Voices Summer than it's the it during school? Like, what is it you're doing in the summer that's getting you to do it <laughs> that feels different than the it during school? Uh, it is probably the feel of the room. It's more loose in the summer and then tight in the school year and. Oh, the writing that you're doing. Yeah, I agree. Writing that you're actually passionate about. Mm -hmm. That's really so, interesting. Grace, Grace, you're uh, participating in CL MOOC um, this yes, summer. I am. And do you feel the same kind of, uh, I don't know, freedom, 
time to explore? I, it's an obvious sort of rhetorical question there, but <laughs> it, I mean, does I it feel like, different than school? Let's put it that way. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> very different than school. <laughs> I feel like CL MOOC is the creative juices that I don't either make or have the time for during school, but it's presented in a way that's a community of people doing the same kind of creative thinking for a period of time and saying, go for it, do whatever you can do with it. It's open-ended. Um, so to me, I think maybe it's, it, there is a connection between that and what happens in the three weeks at Youth Voices. But I love being creative. I don't allow myself to be creative during the school year as much. But the CL MOOC has allowed me to say, oh, here's an idea. I can run with it. I can do with it what I want. And I can share it with people who are open to whatever I might do. And to me, it feels like such a luxury to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. What I can bring back to school, I'd probably have to, th I could probably rationalize it, but I'd have to sort of think about it and it'd probably be overly thought out. I think the joy of it for me is that it's creativity. Uh, um, sorry, Paul, I have a little. Say again, you have to go. Who's that, Alex? Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to step out. Okay. Okay. All right, good Thanks to talk to you. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you. So, you know, I, I think we're on to something here with this notion of community of people. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do, too. So, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, when, when I, the, my first thought in listening to you talk about Youth Voice of Summer was that I do feel like learning experiences in the summer with teachers have that same different quality. But then I was thinking about what Alex was talking about, online spaces, and how sometimes they can be awful and mean and you don't want to post. But I think it's all about what space you're in, and and it's you know it's making those choices about who you want to be around, and you know being around people who are supportive. And there's lots of online spaces and face-to-face -face spaces and whatever you whatever you're into that I think can be supportive. But it's you know takes effort to f seek those out and to be a part of that because everybody has to contribute for it to be that kind of space. Okay. I think what happens in schools, too, is, as a teacher anyway, we spend a lot of time trying to build a community out of this um, random group of 20, 25, hopefully not more than 30 students who are in a room. But in these spaces we're talking about, as Marcus said, you've already got that built because people enter it voluntarily. They're there because they want to be there, even if they don't know what it is when they enter it completely. But there's there's a certain amount of community that's already built by their entering. And I think that's something in schools that a lot of careful time and thoughtful time is put to it that takes time, but that in these spaces um, gets, you know, to the express lane and you go right to the doing, the making, the thinking, whatever it is. So do you think, to, to everybody, do you think there are things that can help foster that in a group of 25 random people? And I'm thinking about Alex's comment of when you walk in a room, you, you sense the mood. Thank you. Oh. You're still with us, Alex? Yeah, I think she is. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted your, your flow there. <laughs> Karen, do you want to say that one more time? Yeah, so what, what can be done to foster that mood or that productive environment in a room of 25 random people, and especially Marcus and Alex? Mm -hmm. Like, what would you like to see teachers do when you know it's a random selection of people and you know there's stuff that has to be done? What mm -hmm. can they do to make a good community in a classroom? Well, that's a really interesting question because I think it 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 um it plays hand in hand with the students' willingness to even do something like that because you know school, a lot of when people go to school, some people actually go to learn, others go because they're forced by their parents and you know they come in with attitudes of 
like they don't want to learn and they just sit there and you know they do their own thing so I, I think it, it really requires willingness from the students and that's what's really unique about Youth Voices that we touched on earlier that everybody comes in that community with some sort of willingness to, to enter the program you know to even take time to submit the application and to do all that it, it really takes a certain level of willingness which what I think makes the community even before we even get there which is really cool but in terms of incorporating that into schools that's a really interesting question that I would have to think about so I'll channel Monica and suggest that maybe an, an approach to this is school should be completely optional nothing should be mandatory no, I don't think I'm paraphrasing no argue <laughs> argue with me I um, I'm surprised the teacher is saying that yeah, Monica, Monica is a different kind of person. <laughs> I would hate to go in to a good way. And argue and I'll get upset. But when someone says that we don't need school, I would totally disagree. Because we all need our education. Yes. All right. I can I can get that. So but, what are ways to build to build some options or some choice or because I hear what you're saying, Marcus, that you know, if somebody doesn't want to be somewhere, and it, you know, I'm telling you, everything you're saying, it's the same thing with teachers. Mm -hmm. I used to do these in-service mm -hmm. workshops where teachers had to be there, and you know, they're, they're, a lot of them were, didn't want to be there, and they come in with their arms, and no, 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 I don't want to be there. Exactly. But I think there's things you can do. I mean, I think everybody wants to learn, and everybody wants to have a creative, flexible environment. It's just, you know, we've been conditioned by so many bad experiences. So how do you how do you make that environment that frees that up? Because I think everybody has that inside themselves. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, re I think it has a lot to do with community building. Like, you see these activities that we have in Youth Voices, it really brings us closer every time we, we complete one. So, for example, we have, we had the, um, in the beginning, we had the, uh, the name game. That was, that was a fun way to, you know, bring everybody together, get everybody to know each other. And I think over time we really got comfortable with each other, and I think even there if there's someone's that if someone is there that's not willing to do it, I think after a while of maybe getting to know these people and being around them so much that it might instill the um, the uh, it might in instill them to want to, to to be a part of it and want to work with these people. Uh, a suggestion I have is also. Maybe once in a while the teacher should allow the students to pick a topic they want mm -hmm. to work on. And my school has this leadership program. Maybe someone uh, from a leadership program could come in, get everyone together, and do some activities, and it would be more fun. Yeah, that's another interesting about another interesting thing about Youth Voices too. The, the fact that they they allow you, they put you on a path, but you know you have multiple roads to a single destination. So, for example, we have the uh, the inquiries that we're working on. Everybody has their own, but at the same time we're all working towards a goal of like answering that question, which is, I think it's really cool. I think that that's something I'd like to see more of in schools. So it's not just like a, a focused project, it's more kind of open-ended in a way where you could explore different things, but still have like the basis of the, uh, of the topic. Nice. Yeah, that's really interesting to me to think about um, my work with teachers mm -hmm. who are under pressure to, you know, to, to reach a particular goal, you know, whether whatever those buzzwords are that they have to accomplish and whatever the assessments are that they have to get their, their kids to, to sort of achieve on. But if they could relinquish a piece of the week, whether it's a day you know, a period or whatever it is, mm -hmm. to give you guys some of this kind of learning, would that be enough? If a teacher were honest with you to say, I can only do it for one period, but I think it's important enough to give one period to this kind of choice and to turn it over to you. However, the other, the rest of the week, you know, may not be, you know, maybe then my arms will be tense and, and my face will be, you know, scrunched up, you know, or whatever it is, and it may not be the kind of learning that either of us is enjoying the most of, but is that, is that enough, is that helpful? 
I think that a lot of students would appreciate that. I know I would. I would definitely be looking forward to that that um, that day. Maybe if it was like once a week, I would definitely be looking forward to that to be able to to branch out and you know work on my own thing, but kind of stay on task in a way. I think that's something that a lot of students would appreciate. And maybe that would build community and help everybody get through mm -hmm. the rest of the time and feel better about it even. I mean, that's kind of the idea behind like Genius Hour or 20% time mm -hmm. for schools that do that. Yeah. I'm also thinking that there um, might be ways to use online communities such as on Youth Voices. Mm -hmm. um, for students to find other students of not only of like mind, of like desire to learn. That's that's not really yeah. complicated. You already have a website. Oh. Just uh -huh. have make a certain website where students put up their work. It could be a little private thing, and it's it's that easy. So talk about why it would be a private thing, or what the pros and cons of that are. Well, I just said private thing because I'm a private person, but. I, I, and I, I get that. Yeah. I think, you know, we we struggle a lot between the um, the pros and cons of things being private for people who are private people, but then the advantages of things being open because then you can connect with people you maybe never knew were interested in this. And I think especially if it's in a site where people are productive. Or, or supportive of each other, like Youth Voices. Yeah, I, I think something probably would work with that. Definitely. Yeah, but we were waiting for Alex to make the case for private, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's the school's choice. If they feel comfortable and the students are fine with it, it's public. If they prefer to be a more secretive people, then it could be private. So I think it should be the student's choice. Yeah, you could have or a vote. Whoever's board. posting, yeah. Yeah, I think it should be the poster's choice, too. Mm -hmm. So, Alex, you can you describe... Um, we, we do... One, one of the things um, we do every morning is, uh, you know, we write on paper in a notebook, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, way private. Um, nobody's collecting that. Nobody's looking at that. And then we ask you to put some of that or all of that, and what you want, on a Google document, which we then link to your profile, which makes it public, right? Um, and when you realized we were going to do that linking, you had like you had to work through that issue. How did you decide, like, do you have a private journal and a public journal then? Um, no. I just have a journal with all my stuff, and I figured I could write it in a way that will make me feel comfortable. Instead of actually writing the thing, I could summarize it. Let me tell you, I almost had a heart attack when you said it was going to be public. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's the moment I was trying to get you to describe. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was uh, frightening, but I got through it. But we love it. I mean, I'm looking at your writing right now on my computer screen. Oh, and it's, no, no, it's awesome. <laughs> it's such good writing, and it's such interesting stuff. Thank you. But, but I have a public and a private journal. I mean, I don't. I do both and make decisions about what goes where. My yeah. private journal is just stuff on my computer that goes on um, Word document, stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's not really all together, but it's just a few stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes on paper. I love writing on paper. So is is your fear of the media, um, I, I don't know if it's fear, but... Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, what are you afraid of? It's just that... When I watch videos, I usually look at the comments, and oh my goodness, sometimes they would make a small comment like, um, "Why did they do that to the child?" And then everyone would start cursing at that person and attacking that person. And I'm thinking, man, it's just a small question. What are they? What are they doing? But that's about the space too, because I think YouTube is very much that way. But I think sites like Vimeo are not that way, or I mean, certainly Youth Voices. And I mean, I think about where I post. There's places I don't post a lot of stuff that's personal because who needs that, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, I yeah, let me let me push back a little bit again, Marcus. I, I um, without calling anybody out, but I'm going to a little bit. Like you were working with uh, um, 
Kenny today, right? And Kenny has a different kind of commitment to writing and to the work at Youth Voices than you do. Mm -hmm. and so I just want to say that, yes, people have chosen to be in the program, uh -huh. but I don't, I don't think the young people in, in the room are any different than young people anywhere. So I don't think it's necessarily that they've applied to be there. I think it's about, I don't know. It's something more about the community that gets built, and so it can't. So it's easier to transfer to a school where people, you know, don't necessarily choose to be there. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to push back against that a little bit? Um. Uh, can you rephrase the question? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you suggested earlier that everybody's a great writer and wants to be in the program, and they're all excited about it. But I don't experience it that way. So, but you can still learn from somebody who doesn't have the same level of commitment. That yeah, I think everybody in there has their own strengths and weaknesses. Some are more apparent than others. I noticed that Kenny he likes to incorporate music. Oh, okay. Into his writing, um, he writes a lot of poems. He, um, when he is doing his designing, it usually has something to do with graffiti or, or music or something in, in that, um, something in that, like, uh, mm -hmm. not in that, uh, something, kind of like a a street vibe, kind of. Yeah, well, you and he designed an amazing badge today. Do you want to describe how you did that? Mm -hmm. Which one was that? The one. You're, you're cutting in and out a little bit. The one with the the skulls and so forth at first, and then changed. But oh, um, yeah, that was uh, I was I was more helping him on on the um on the designing aspect. Like he would choose the images, and then I would I would um, give him recommendations on how to uh, how to structure it, and then I would give him pointers on how to uh, export it as a JPEG image and upload it to the uh, to the site. Mm -hmm. Uh, Paul, out of honesty. You are totally correct to go against it because the only reason I actually got in here is because my mom said, hey, there's a writing program this summer. I said, sure, I have nothing else to do. So, <laughs> I so you were made to do this? <laughs> yeah, I just came back to whatever. But it's actually more fun than I thought it was going to be. So don't worry about that. Well, and that's a lot of it, and a lot of it is that what's the vibe of the room. And, I mean, I think about how different how we can be different in different rooms. Like, I can go into a space and be, you know, open and wildly creative, and I can go into another space, and I can be that person who's like, I don't want to be here, and I'm not sharing. And mm -hmm. it's about the room, right? I think it's the way that people... Um, like, everyone I've spoken to has good things to say about your writing, and they're never you for the way that you write or how you write, um, which I think it's, it's good for those people because it, it allows them to open up more. They feel comfortable because, I mean, if you're, like, there's people in there that don't speak English that well, and we still, you know, we still clap for them. We still treat them as if they, they were, um, they spoke English, and we, we, we'd understand them fluently. But the fact of the matter is that everyone there, it treats everyone equal, and they're, um, they're very... They're very friendly, and they just they create this environment that's really easy to get yourself invested in, and it's it becomes really easy to just share out loud. It it just it feels natural. It's nice that that makes everybody's work better. And when I'm in a room like that, it makes me think more. When I'm in other spaces, about mm -hmm. if I'm more supportive, it, it makes everybody better, including me. And I think society doesn't always lead us to that. I mean, sometimes. Our culture is so like be critical and be you know be in your box or whatever. I agree. I Especially think that's, the media culture. Uh, yeah, you know. mm, yeah, that's getting to something that I know to myself. I'm sounding like I'm repeating myself. Hopefully, I don't to other people. But <laughs> I think the fear of the media for me mm -hmm. is that it doesn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. And when the media speaks at me and throws things at me. That's the media that I don't like, and that's the media I don't want to participate in. But I think the media that we're being asked to participate in, in some of these kinds of summer communities, listens to us. And that's the piece that I think I've 
kind of gotten stuck on this summer as the important piece, that when I'm in a space that listens to me, even if it critiques me, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm okay with it. You know, I still feel the sense of community. I can I can hear it um, because I feel like I'm in a community that's listening to me, even if they don't agree with me. And that's I think that's that's where the media, you know, is is different when it's a closed media as opposed to an open media space, which is I think what we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. That brings up a lot of connected learning pieces mm -hmm. about about openly networked, but also about a maker culture where we're producing and contributing and not just being the recipients of stuff. Yeah. You know, the connected learning stuff reminds me also and um, of the cross cross um, generational. Sharing, um, which which we're able to do in the summertime too. And I, I wanted to ask Alexander and Marcus um, how it's been to have adults in the room who are teachers, but they're not acting like teachers. I think that was really interesting because a lot of them I didn't even know were teachers. They look super young. For example, there was Raven. I didn't know she was a teacher. I didn't know Coral was a teacher. Either. <laughs> And um, I noticed because they were getting... That's what you got for coming late the second day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was really interesting because when I noticed they were teachers, I, I realized the whole time we were conversating and we were together, they were, they were just like students. I could not tell the difference. And what's really cool about that is I think that they're there because they want to be better as teachers and they're coming here to kind of put themselves back into the shoes of students and familiar, familiarize themselves with the, the modern student body and see and, and kind of focus on the needs of the, of the modern student body and how they could incorporate it into, into their curriculum during the school year, which I think is really, really cool. I like that they're doing that. I admire that, actually, that they're, they're taking time out of their summer to put themselves in the, in the shoes of a student and, you know, to better themselves as a teacher. Mm -hmm. But they, but they, at the same time, they are older than you and have more experience. Yes. Does that, is there an advantage to that, or does that matter? Yeah, because I, I do see them as someone I can... But at the same time, they're kind of on my level, too, which is an interesting dynamic, to have someone who's on your level, but at the same time is, is, has more experience. It's kind of hard to, uh, to describe. That's another interesting thing to think about carrying into the school year and, mm -hmm. and what are expectations and how do we all relate to each other. I think that each teacher here is definitely going to bring back something. But you know, one of the things that makes me think about is, um, and I wondered if you have thought about this, Marcus, um, is that there are other adults in your building than just teachers. Mm -hmm. And if those adults were also treated on some equal level and, you know, you could learn alongside them what that would be like. Do you, do you know the other adults I'm talking about? Um, yeah, we have um, um, guidance counselors, we have deans, people like that. Yeah, but even, uh, are there others as well or not? Like um, people who work in the lunchroom, janitors. Yeah, yeah you know. janitors, yeah. Custodians, like lunch ladies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just yeah. It's not exactly the same thing, and and I don't know. I'm just, just trying to think of something. Yeah, it would it would um it would definitely feel different if I had to replace everybody, all the teachers in that room with people from my school. It would kind of feel weird because I've kind of established a, a different relationship with them. To see that that person there, that I've um I've grown to, I don't want to say look up to, but you know that I always viewed that person as a as a figure of authority in a way. So in terms of like a dean or a guidance counselor of that of that sort. To see them in in, in that room and in, in, in those shoes working with me would be kind of weird. I think what was what really sealed it for me here was the fact that I came in there not knowing any of those people were teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started speaking and then it, it kind of felt natural. Like for instance Jim, me and him are we get along really well. We he uh, we share a lot of things together and he's helped me 
uh, he's actually helped me learn a lot about globalization through his writing too, which was cool. So I learned I learned something from Jim this summer also that I wasn't really that great at, which was globalization. I didn't really know much about that. So there, there's got to be way for teachers to to play that kind of role too, so that we're sitting down and learning alongside you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I don't know exactly what that looks like. So. Yeah. <laughs> We're thinking about. Karen, do you want to give a little pitch and then we'll find other times too but about K-12 online? I do because I actually yeah. think it fits into this conversation. <laughs> so I am involved in an online conference um, okay. called K-12 Online and it's totally free and the people who do presentations or who work on it are all volunteers and there is a strand that I'm chairing that's called Passion Driven Learning, which fits into a lot of our conversation about sort of choice and finding things. And what I would love to do is have um, a, a session on this from people around Youth Voices. And it could be summer program, it could be people who are on it during the year. Um, would love to have a really strong student voice in that. And I wonder if that's an opportunity for students and teachers to work together on something in a more peer uh, environment to sort of explore some of these issues. Um, the, this conference is all virtual, so you don't have to go anywhere to present. It's, 20, it's a 20 minute video session, so we would just need some people who would be interested in helping put together that video and, you know, somebody who could kind of uh, be the coordinator and make sure something gets put together by the fall. <laughs> well, and and I'm wondering if, um, I mean, Marcus, you mentioned that you're, you'll be doing an internship with Bronx, yeah. right? Yeah, I'll be doing it year-round, so I'll be, I'll be on campus. You guys work there, right, you and Christy? No, we don't. Um, no, no we we're no, but we go <laughs> so back to school. To, we'll oh, figure. Okay. Yeah, we go back to school. Uh, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. A session on Broxnet but, would be awesome. But, but, but yeah, yeah, so I you know, can the, um, even set that up. I can speak to because I actually got really friendly with those guys already. Um, we were actually talking about inviting guest stars from. Uh, you guys are familiar with the show Dexter on Showtime. Yeah. We were gonna invite one of the guests yeah. to give us like a. Kind of oh, like nice. uh, an acting, I forgot what it was, what they called it. But um, kind of give us like acting pointers and stuff like that. We we're going to have a segment about that. So I can probably really, remember that too. The really cool thing about the interns who worked with um, our young people mm -hmm. um, were is that they are, what, they're 23 years old, and they've been working with BronxNet since they were 15 themselves. Yes, yeah, so. Justin, the one who actually recruited me, he's 22 now, and he was working with BronxNet since he was 14. Yeah. Awesome. That's a great so, ex Internships is a great example of passion-driven learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be a fascinating presentation. Because mm -hmm. some schools are starting to do more of that in a school environment, but I think some of them just don't know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So the applications have there's supposed to be something in by the middle of next month, is that right? Yeah, August fifteenth. And it's what? a minimal application. I so put we a don't link have to have the, the video done. When's the video have to not. be done? Um, early October. Okay. The actual conference is, is October twentieth so, to the thirty first. So I'm I'm thinking we're gonna we could pitch this with Bronxnet and uh, get something together around. Do a Bronxnet that. one and then do a Youth Voices one. Yeah. I think. Uh, That'd be great. I would love that. Yeah. And we do have a couple of Saturdays that um, before that that we might be able to just pull it all together. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll Marcus just put, we'll uh, be in touch. Quick, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Quick, Quick plug to anybody who's watching. Um, there are also strands for gamification, um, stories of learning, which could encompass almost anything, and STEAM, in addition to passion-driven learning, which I'm heading up. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's a great way to um, get to share your experiences with a supportive community, to get your message out there, and it's also a great thing to have just in your portfolio to say like I produced this thing and I was at this conf I, I presented for this conference mm -hmm. without having to travel or do any of that. 
and it's fun. <laughs> I was a presenter. I had a, I, it was a great experience. Cool. Grace, you have any thoughts at this point? <laughs> <laughs> the summer was great. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's my main thought. <laughs> You know, if you, we could possibly channel those juices into the school year, it would be it would be amazing. But it takes, I think, it takes some doing. I think mm -hmm. it takes some creative thinking to use the term. But uh, I think it's really important. I think it's also important for teachers to find those connected communities during the school year, even if they're more limited. You know, but to keep it going in whatever way they can during the school year. And that's hard. I mean for but teachers. I th yeah, I, I think there's, there's more and more of that available is, you know, like the conference Karen was talking about, you know, if, if each person would find a way to participate in one thing and see where it goes, I think it would be a domino effect. Mm -hmm. Marcus, thank you for joining us and uh, contributing so much. Yeah, no problem, Paul. Anytime. You're wise thank beyond you. your thank years. You. So yeah, so. we really oh. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. So how often are you going to be at Barksnet? Do you know? Um, I'm going to be there year-round every Monday, Wednesday from 4, 30, from 4 to 5.30. Excellent. Okay. And for the rest of summer, too, from 1 to 3. Okay. You've got a great oh. voice, both both in the way it sounds and what you have to say. Mm. Uh, say. <laughs> so, Marcus, you're you're there this this coming Wednesday. Sorry. Yeah, I'm start. gonna be there all the time. So if you need me, I'll be <laughs> in the. So Christy and I, Christy and I are gonna do the live show on Wednesday. By the way, Wednesday. Uh -huh. So. Oh, you're maybe gonna be there, there with us. Yeah. yeah. So oh yeah, maybe. I'll be there. I'll definitely be there. Okay, well, I'll talk to you about that tomorrow. Anyway, um, Karen, thank you, as always. Um, nice to see thank you, Karen. Nice to be here. Um, I think, yes, next week, I, yeah, I'm pulling together. I, I asked Terry Elliott, and he hasn't gotten back to me yet. If you hear this, Terry, um, let me know. Um, to, to, to kind of pull together, he's, he's like Mr. Annotation, I think. Like, he knows Ooh. all these annotation places. Mm -hmm. So I want to do a thing about annotation. Um, cool. The guy who um, has put together Now Comment um, noticed that how much we were using Now Comment this um, summer. And he said, and he has lots of ideas that he wants to play with. So he's going to join us next week. So we'll be here at uh, 9 o'clock uh, Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time on Wednesday. As we are almost every Wednesday, it's summertime we play around a little bit. Um, thank you, Peggy, for finding us. <laughs> um, and uh, this is uh, Teacher Teaching Teachers, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network that Jeff Nebo and Dave Cormier started up um, years ago. Thank you all. Oh, all right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Paul. Nice to see you, Marcus. Good to talk to you all. See you tomorrow. Good night, guys.